Good day, Strategy Gamers, and welcome back to episode 16 of our Let's Play series, uh, 1941 Scenario as the Soviets. Uh, in this episode, we're going to be completing turn 7 with our ground movement phase for the second half of the theater, and seeing what the Axis has up their sleeves at the end of turn resolution. Um, it's been... I, I've been building and building in confidence, and there's usually this trend where the first episode of a turn sitting there going, wow, did not think they would be able to pull that off. I reorganize all my units, I get a nice straight front line that I can use to defend. Then in the next episode for the turn, I always sit there going, oh, look at all these great defensive perimeters we have set up. This is going to be fantastic. No way they break through. I hit end turn and then the worst happens. Uh, so we'll we'll see if that pattern continues, if my confidence continues to grow throughout the episode and then is slightly shattered uh, by the end. Um, but I, I overall have really been been having a lot of fun with this particular uh, playthrough and with this scenario. Um, I certainly think that if I am defeated uh, before the, the winter, um, I, I will almost certainly do another attempt at this because I, I've learned a lot of lessons so far, uh, many of them coming from you guys in the comments section. So thank you again for continuing to watch and support the channel. I am way behind on comments uh, and I need to just set aside some time one of these evenings to catch up on them, but I, I do get a chance to look at them and I, I really do appreciate all the advice and, and support you guys provide there. Uh, getting into the meat and potatoes of things, though, uh, we left off right around our Yole in the previous episode, and really I'm, I'm quite happy with how our defense is set up in this area. They had, in the previous turn, had a couple of attacks where we just had these token units resistance to try to slow them down, um, but overall they're, they're now hitting the stronger defensive line that we've established. The only maybe concern would be that Bryansk is actually right here now at the front line, and Bryansk does not have the heavy woods and such to defend it, so it's just this urban environment where we have right now the 292nd Rifle Division and the 51st Tank Division um, defending Bryansk proper. And back here we have these tank divisions on refit, and I want to see if maybe their TOE is looking any better. Oh, and they actually really are. So I think we can probably take these, well, we can take at least the 48th Rifle Division off a of refit. We need to take a look at the other two to see if that's the same story there. Uh, yeah, not so sure about the 109th, 50% medium and heavy tank. Cavalry tank's in a better position, though. And this Rifle Division. Yeah, we're, we're going to let them sit another turn, I think. But what that tells me is I'm going to take the 48th uh, Tank Division and set them to reserve instead of refit. And hopefully they can be a bit of a surprise on any attack here. We've got defensive value 19, 33, and 19. So 19 defending the flanks of Bryansk, 33 defending the road and the, the hub that Bryansk represents before they continue on to our Yol. So I think we're pretty good with what that's looking like. Another unit on refit here. Let's set this guy to refit, and we're going to get him onto the HQ. You're already on refit. You are on refit, too, but let's bring you back to your HQ. There we go. And then this guy is worse off, so we're going to set him on refit. I don't... So I'm, I'm going to bring him up here, um, because if they do break through, I at least want to make sure that it's not a straight shot and they can kind of expose out. But if they have to attack us there, that, that might be that one extra last layer, and if nothing else, they can start building some fortifications there in those light woods. And that's kind of the same thought with this guy back here. Um, so there are a couple weaker points in the line, right? Seven, eight, um, four... Uh, so actually looking at this, so I'm thinking we're going to take the 295th rifle and bring them up here. 
So now we have 30, 25. I think that's looking pretty good. So what I'm going to do here is I'm also going to bring up this 297th. And then I'm going to take this Airborne Brigade and just have them occupy this space back here. And I'll move this one up and set them to refit. So we maintain some of our layers staying in some of those fortif- So by abandoning a, a hex with fortification levels, over time it will deteriorate more quickly because, right, no one's there to, to corner off the foxhole, uh, right, if there's um, wind, rain, weather elements, etc. Um, but by maintaining a, a unit's presence in there, it's going to deteriorate or grow. Um, well, deteriorate less quickly, and it may possibly grow depending on what you've you've slotted in there. So, it's one of the reasons for doing that. Thinking about this guy now that I've hmm, might leave that for now. Continuing on down. So, really, I, I have a gut feeling that says they're going to try to push through here to get to Kursk. Um, with, for example, the Seventeenth Panzer and the 10th Panzer. I think the good news that I'm seeing right now from the reconnaissance that was flown is all of these guys are in horrible supply situations, right? They're all undersupplied. And especially as they are all motorized and mechanized units, I don't think... Now, here, here is me being so confident and sure of myself. Knock on wood, please, for me. I don't think these units will attack this part of the front line this turn. Um, and although I am a betting man, um, I will not put any money down on that because I'm not, I've been surprised too many times is how I would put it. Um, and this guy, do we want to keep you out there? So first off, you don't need to be on refix. You've actually recovered quite well. So we're going to take you back to ready status. Are you better served by moving... South and, and one of the reasons I say that is right now he can be attacked by all four hexes. However, three of those four hexes are just kind of motorized regiments or equivalent strength. Um so I don't know how much actual peril he is facing right now, but I think we will draw him back. So then the next question is where to? We already have 15 here, 11, 5. I think probably the answer is down here to this unit. It's one of these two. I think we're going to go here. Just because we have a little bit of a gap here in the line where there's clear terrain, so I want the most southern tip to be a little bit more fortified, I think. There we go. And this is where I'm starting to get a little, a little worried, right, looking at things, because they, um, we, we just have the one line, <laughs> right, and, and we still haven't dug in enough to, to even have fortification level one. Once we do, it should significantly help, but I, if they break through this, right, there, there's nothing, nothing to stop them, and it's all clear terrain, which is actually the scarier part to me. So, I mean, effectively, once they've taken these hexes, and, and arguably you could say once they've taken these swamp hexes, which is where I'd be falling back to next, um, they're going to take Kursk then. And, and they're, let's be honest with ourselves, guys, as confident as I may be at the end of some of these turns, they will take Kursk. Um, there, there's no chance in heck we're going to keep Kursk or Kharkov, especially with my overall, say, grand strategy being under no cost, let Leningrad or Moscow fall. Right. By, by picking that strategy, we really have weakened the southern half of the front. And, and all of these victory points here, I know we are just certainty we are going to lose them even probably ahead of schedule to the historical dates. But I still want to make it as difficult as I possibly can for the Axis player. Um, but if we, if we can hold Moscow and Leningrad, I think there's a really good hope for us. All right, I've gone off on one of my tangents again. There's nothing that I'm going to change along this tree line, if you will. 
So I think these guys all stay right where they're at. Uh, we have two units on refit here. One of them is even routed. And I think that was the case last turn too. So they have not yet gotten any better. Um, we'll give them another turn here. This scares the crap out of me looking at it just from the high level. We're going to keep these guys right where they're at because that's just incredible defensive position across the across the Desna River um, in swamp territory, right? All of that is good news. They'll probably be able to break south through here, though. But for now, we can at least stay there and keep holding. Do you still need to be on refit? Difficulty with you is you are just so middle of nowhere your supply is going to suck as well as using up a lot of trucks to get to you but I want you to start digging in there okay there is no reason to lose that rifle division there so we're going to pull him back question is where could go here Let's see. I'm going to go here. Set them to refit. And then I'm going to take the 120th. I'm going to have him come up here, I think. Because that's closer to his army anyways. Was going to take up less trucks and such to get there. Priority was just even getting you off the front line, so that's been accomplished now. I have a similar situation with this guy here. I think for him... You know, looking at this situation on the map, all of these guys I need to retreat. All of them. Um, because with these... Uh, units moving north were about to be encircled. So overall, we need to get all of these guys as far back as we possibly can. So we're going to take these units here back. I'll leave you a couple of these I might leave to just try to be defensive blockers, right? Um, but it's time to now start building the next defensive line. It's really how I'm feeling about this. I'm going to take you back here. Set you on refit. Oh my gosh, all of you guys are already on refit. What is happening? We have no men in the south, is really the, the gist of this entire story. We have no men in the south. So just take you all the way back here. Fourth Army HQ. Have you come back there too? Tenth Army. Or Third Army. Third Army will have come back here. Tenth Army will have to go there. Calvary HQ can go here. Don't even have anyone attached to you though, do you? This mechanized unit of all two hundred men. My goodness. Let's just um Yeah, let's just bring you all the way back there. 370 men. Get you back behind the lines here. Some of these guys just got completely crushed. This is full on retreat at this point. So now what I'm going to do with some of these units, so I might leave him there. This rifle division I might bring down here.
We'll also bring back here you. Yeah, let's see. I'm going to take mechanized division and bring them here. Because if I can hold this hex, I'm probably going to hold up here. That then creates a channel by which I think my guys can still get out. Okay, one of you just needs to go even further back in this mechanized unit. It's just no good terrain to defend on. Bring you back there. Yeah. I think this works. This guy's my last question. I think I might retreat him as well. Back to here. my mind about this guy. Bring him up to this town. Okay. So they'll they'll probably be encircled. That was bound to happen here. And they, they've escaped encirclement like two or three times now, so it's already a compliment to their heroism. Um do I keep this guy here? I think I should. Yeah, we're gonna keep him there. And time to try to build another front line. My goodness. My goodness. Back here we've got this unit isolated. And again, I'm just going to move him again to try to... I don't think they would have repaired these rail lines by now. But regardless, I'm going to move him to try to cause as much damage as I possibly can. There we go. So now I've also cut off this line. It's literally a rifle division acting as partisans. But okay. So we had withdrawn from Kiev and started establishing this new front line. And look how quickly they've already recovered and gotten up to it. If we look real quick here at battle results. Um, let's just see like here they actually attacked five times. Scouted us, scouted us, scouted us again. And then finally they did attack. But look at that, right? You took out 30 of their armored units. Um, let's see what they were. So a pretty healthy mixture with a lot of Panzer IVs too. Right, so that, that's really, really some good news. And we did not lose really anything too meaningful. I mean, the... The KV-1s are pretty good, um, but a lot of these are are ancient decrepit tanks like the BT-5, BT-7, OT-130. I mean, these things we're, we're not going to see for quite a while. Um, not not going to say we're not going to see them for quite a while. That implies that they return. Uh, we're not going to see them again uh, after this year, pretty much. So, okay. So there, there's some pretty intense fighting happening here. We might as well take a look at this one over here. This one we held. Right, lost a number of armor units, but we held them back. They attacked again, and these aren't scouting operations, right? They're, they're attacks. Here they lost 23 armor. It's almost one-to-one -one on armor losses. And this is just so difficult. So difficult for the Axis player to replace these, especially when they're losing them early in the war. They lost another 25 the next time they attacked. My goodness, look at that. And then finally they, they did break through, but by that time they only had 73 armor to attack with. Right, so that's... Between those five battles, that's effectively the majority of a panzer division that was eliminated. Now, they have three here uh, that were part of the attack, but... One of them, if you were to, to aggregate all the results to one of them, would pretty much be combat ineffective at this point. So that was, was some pretty good results we got there.
back to the main issue at hand that I've kind of been beating around because I don't want to think about it, is from right here, north to here, we have some serious defensive concerns. Right, we have, uh, what is this, about seven hexes that are defended by a defensive value of seven. Right, that is, is not good. Uh, and, and frankly, not terribly sustainable. Um, but I don't think we have a whole lot of choices other than to do a very layered defense, right? So what I'm going to end up doing here is actually, for example, bringing this unit back into that town. And I'm going to set him on reserve. This tank division is actually unready. That's not good news. How unready are they? It doesn't really matter if they're in that state. They're pretty unready. So we're going to have to change him back to refit. We're going to move him up here to the town. Which then already changes the plans that I had. These are cavalry divisions. Oof. That's not good. That's not good. So we're going to bring you up here. Let's see. I think we'll leave that as is. This entire rail line going to Kharkov has this one cavalry division at the moment. It's not good. So what I'm going to do is bring back, I think, this mechanized unit here to try to start digging into that forest patch there. Oh, this just feels like a nightmare thinking about how to defend all of this. That is just scary. It's very scary. Back here we got a couple of units that are on refit. You're down to just one. What I'm going to do here is take this armor unit, and I'm going to set them to reserve. So hopefully they can try to be impactful to any attacks here against these guys. It's not going to help that much, but it's something. And here we have a couple of refits going on. You know, just so I don't lose them all at the same time, I'm going to move a couple of them back here. This HQ unit, we're just even going to withdraw even further here. There we go. I mean, there, there are some highlights here where we actually have a decent defensive perimeter. The problem is them just going around it, right? which it looks like they're going to be doing here. Um, and really, it's a shame we couldn't defend these hexes better in previous turns, but we have now lost them. That would have been all the Swampland defending that would have worked out pretty well, but they just... They mobilized before we were able to, to get into position there. So this is a precarious setup all along here. It's very, very difficult to manage. Looking south, we see we're taking kind of that layered strategy, right? Where we have this line, this line, this line, right? Three layers of defense trying to, to slow them down, leading towards these units. And we'd brought in a number of reinforcements in the previous turns um, to, to try to help with this. And looking at it, I see that I'd actually forgotten to put them all off of Stavka. So I will go off camera in a minute here, and I'll do that. So give me just a second. Okay, and we're back. Uh, thanks for holding a second there as I did that. Can't believe I missed that in the previous um, episode, but it is resolved now, regardless. First things first is up here. These are kind of remnants, I think, from the battle that held out so successfully here. I want to get these guys back in in a state where they can actually get into a refit status and such. Um, so I'm going to bring them back here to a refit 
And you actually need to be assigned to a new HQ as well. So we're going to put you in the 12th Army. Uh, you're, you're doing pretty good there, so we're going to move you back here. We'll set you to refit. There we go. Did we have other remnants that had fallen back there? Don't think so. So now it's on to the next uh, X in the line for them to try to break through, right? And we're going to keep forcing them to break through line after line after line. Now, it, um, it probably gives the impression that I have focused a lot more on Niepchrovsk and Zaprzai and Sevastopol, and my apologies for offending anyone with my horrible pronunciation there, uh, we're focusing a little more on these three, and one of the reasons that that is, is I'm a big believer that with the defenses of the Dnieper here in the swamps, this is where we can kind of make the Axis player pay the most for ground that they take. But defending Sevastopol strongly doesn't work unless you can also defend that Crimean, Crimean Peninsula, and you can't defend the Crimean Peninsula if you can't defend the Dnieper. So therein, the, the transit property here, all of these guys, all these cities, all need to be defended just as strongly as we want to defend Sevastopol. The focus is still Moscow and Leningrad, but internally I have this little hope of mine that maybe Sevastopol is one that we can actually hold longer than others, and for good reason, I hope so, because it's worth a heck of a lot more victory points. Right? Um, I'm, I'm hoping we can be more successful there than we were in other areas in the map. But it really requires a strong defense here of the Dnieper, and to as long as possible stop them from getting to Stalino um, and further. So we're, we're going to really try to, to defend this to our last in the south. Them breaking through and getting Kharkov and Kursk, again, it's going to happen. We don't have the terrain to be able to to really put up a really strong defense here in kind of the heartland of, um, well, parts of Ukraine here. Um, we don't have the terrain to be able to defend that as well. And you just look at the map all the way to Stalingrad, that's really kind of true. But we have this one line here, plus the rough terrain of Crimea, plus Sevastopol as a fortress city. Um, I think we have some hope. So that will be our little bastion in the south. And then obviously we'll get pretty defensive as they approach Stalingrad. Um, but Kharkov, Kursk, these planes in the open here, they're kind of forfeit to me. Um, right, it's... We have a few more lines where we can actually successfully defend. Um, we'll defend very well, I should say. And we may focus a little bit on those. We'll come to that later. Uh, but for now... They're, they're going to be successful through here, so. Back to the matter at hand. Um, I don't think we have too many changes to make along here, because really we're just continuing to follow our, our strategy that we had kind of the outset here of layers, and, and it is, to a large extent, working. Um, again, a little concerned about uh, the one cavalry division here along on this road, but when we look further south, they didn't make a whole lot of advances. Over here, I as much as possible want to try to save these guys. I don't know if it will be feasible, but I'm certainly going to try. And can I now take that airborne brigade and get them even further out, allowing me to go here with this unit? That might not have been the right choice. That was not the right choice. I should have stayed there. Because now they're going to get that air base too. Shoot. Should have stayed there and made them fight for it. But I don't think it would have mattered because looking at it, our supplies are so low. Bit of a blunder on my part there. Could use the undo button, but I, I made that decision, right? Um, any 
any military leader sitting there who, who makes the wrong decision and then with 2020 hindsight goes, nah, that's not the right one, doesn't get an undo button, so we're not going to use it either. Back here, a couple of units that are just unready that we're just going to check for. These are, a couple of them are all unready, but I don't know. Debating if I swap out, for example, these two units. I think I will. And then we'll bring up the rifle division. And you only have 2,000 men. We're just going to leave you there. 2,000 men just being another token resistance, I'm kind of okay with leaving there. But when it comes to... Um, although they don't actually have any armor. My my argument was going to be when it comes to a mechanized division that's got a hundred different armor units, right? I, I might want to save those, but they they have lost all of them. So never mind. Set them to refit status. That's the unit that retreated. Okay. All right. Oh boy, a lot going on up here. And these guys are going to probably be in for a world of hurt if they come south here. If they stay on that main road, they'll probably still have to get through him anyways because they'll want to try to get three hexes that can attack this guy. Um, and they won't want to do it from the zone of control. Like, if they, if they moved into this hex without taking him, they're going to have no movement points, high fatigue, all of it. So I think that all stays just as it is. Okay. Well, along the Dnieper here, they didn't, um, they didn't manage to break through anywhere, but they now have a few spots where it looks like they're threatening to do so. And this is a big worry for me looking at this, right? I, I really worry about the fact that they've got 18 attack and I've got 4 defense here. Um, so you're, you're in reserve, but I'm actually just going to move you up, and now you're in ready state. That's good. And then down here, I'm going to take this rifle division. So now that's 20. There we go. That's that's what I was hoping for. So I don't think they'll be able to break through there next turn. We'll leave that cavalry division on reserve, I think. This might be another weak point here, but they have to move into this pocket to attack there, so I think we're probably going to be okay. This is another area of concern, right? We only have 12 defense value. They've got about 20 just sitting there already. So do I maybe take... Can you go to ready state and move up? That gets us up to 15. So that's something. I'm just going to move you into this hex. Set you to refit. We have this armor unit in reserve, that's good. Um, oh boy, yeah, like, that mechanized division, I really just should get out of there. So we're gonna move them back there and set them to refit. That leaves me with 12 here, and this is one of the more likely spots they'll try to break through. So I think what I will do... They're not going to be ready either. So many of these units are in such an unready state that I can't even really apply them to the front. You're going to get called up to the front even though you're already badly hurting. Just to try to help. There's so that's 14. Yeah, this is where the hurt's going to come from right here is this stack. That stack can break through any part in, the li in our line down here in the south. So it could very well be that already this next turn they break through, which is really unfortunate. Um, we have some tank divisions here. These guys are actually, they, um, they came from Odessa, uh, from the city fortress. They managed to escape. Um, so I think what we'll do is actually have you on reserve move up here. 
Same with you. And hopefully those units on reserve can kind of come blaring into the front lines to try to help. You are unready. I think I will bring you up here to refit. There we go. So if they do cross the Dnieper here, uh, I, obviously as long as I possibly can want to hold them without them being able to do so, but if they do, um, that is not the end of the story. Right, they, they can break through in one small part and we can still manage to hold them right here on the peninsula, but it's going to be a lot more difficult. These guys, there's, there's too much zone of control for them to get out, so they're going to fight to their last, it looks like. Your heroes of the Soviet Union. And then down here in Sevastopol, we've got this naval infantry unit, which actually maybe will move him up. Yeah, I think we will move him up here. There we go. Um, now what we need to look at is where do we want our reserves coming in? And we have, what do we have? We have five rifle divisions and three of the cavalry divisions, there'll be 70% TOB that can come in. Um, so five rifle divisions and three cavalry. Where could we use them the most? So one of the first questions would probably be, does it make sense to bring them in around the Smolensk defense? Right? Would they be most useful here? Um... South of Lake Gilman, I was a little disappointed in the strength of the cavalry units we brought in, right? And we're still not quite as strong as I would like us to be over here. We're probably okay on their push north towards Leningrad. Uh, feeling good around Aryol with the depth of our defenses. Really, it is in the south that I have the most concerns, but I also don't want to throw away resources to a area of the theater that I... I am purposefully kind of making, um, I don't know, less important. Right, the, it's not the, it's not the focus. Um, so one option would be to bring them in here to help with the defense of Crimea, but it may be a little too early to do that. And by next turn, if they do break through the Dnieper, it's it's kind of too late to send them in. I think probably our greatest opportunity is going to be here with their ability to just push straight through Kharkov. And I'm not necessarily worried about them getting to Kharkov early. What I worry about with this is their ability to encircle either side of the frontier by breaking through. So I think let's send them to Kharkov. So they're all gonna come in there. And actually, let's do this with the commander's report. So, commander's report. So we're already looking at just rifle divisions that are in reserve and can be called up, can transfer, yes, infantry. They all have good TOE. So we're going to transfer them to the map. And then we'll go to cavalry. And we'll transfer these three. Okay. Uh, we'll do... Oh. Blank in here. AI Depot Management. There it is. <laughs> and we'll hit enter. And please, cross your fingers for us. Um, let's see how this goes. I'm feeling great. It's going to be fine. Nothing at all to worry about. Everything will be just fine. All the defenses will hold exactly as they should to plan. And I won't have any surprises in the next five minutes. Said a very optimistic gamer. Going through our or the, the Axis logistics phase, then we'll be on their air phase, which should go pretty quick, because they're still... 
scrambling to get all of their air units up to the front lines as they capture air bases. Still going here. You know, maybe what I should have looked at is maybe do we sacrifice our other theater boxes for a couple of turns? That might be something to consider for the, the next episodes. Because we've got, I think it was two of the three theater boxes were actually above what's kind of required for the theater box. Maybe we should weaken them a little more. That might not have been the worst call. I think maybe, depending on how turn 8 goes, it, it's completely unknown at this point, but depending on how turn 8 goes, I think there's a good chance that Sevastpol will be our next destination for reserve units um, to really start to try to cut them off at the peninsula head. I think the only thing that will change my mind on that will be if they have a lot of success in and around Smolensk or Leningrad, um, because those are the two focuses. Right, I I would rather lose Sevastpol five turns early, um, than give them a good shot at taking Moscow or Leningrad. So those those will maintain the the priority. Now their air phase. See if there's anything shocking here. It just sounds like a bunch of recon right off the bat on the first day. And we're flying a bunch of sorties to try to counter them. And we have we have shot down seven of their recon with flak, none from air combat. It's a little embarrassing, guys. They've lost ten now to flak. We've had 182 sorties, and all of our losses have come from operational losses. Weather and pilot training is one of the big causes of that, and the airframe, I suppose. Now we get to their turn. Okay, so already they're pushing north towards Leningrad, right? Um, they're taking care of this isolated unit that actually managed to hold. But the second time, they retreated. That's fair. Don't blame them at all. Oh, okay, so they've pushed north. This is north of Smolensk here. They routed a rifle division. Oh no. Okay, so that is a huge stack of infantry and armor that has now gotten behind us, it looks like. Who would have thought I'd be saying oh no during this segment of the episode? It's pretty predictable. Uh, they are pushing towards Kharkov with that advance, it looks like probably going to have our three units there encircled. Right now they're trying to push through one of our layers of defense here. This is back more north near uh, kind of the old Kiev line and they actually managed to hold. Managed to hold here north of Smolensk, that's good news. Attacked again and... and... held. Okay. Good. I don't think we're going to last another because we've lost our fortification level. So they scouted us. Look at that strength. My goodness, that's 76 attacking combat value. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, so their infantry has arrived and they are just going to swarm over this northern flank of Smolensk. These are just scouting operations, otherwise they'd be pushed through already. Oh. My. Look at the strength of those units, guys. My goodness. Even that hex where we have 22 defensive value, they already outnumber us 2 to 1 with just one stack. Yeah, so all three of those guys retreated. I do not blame them at all. They retreated. So now they're pushing up here towards Veleki Luki. Uh, kind of that crossroads that's so important to them. And they're about to encircle it, it looks like. They're attempting to. Don't know if they'll be able to this turn, but they're attempting to. So this is a little closer towards Smolensk. Looks like they're scouting us a couple times. That time we actually held. 
No losses. They lost six armor. And that happen every time, please? No losses and they lose six armor? They lost nine armor that time. Who is their commander there? Wow. Okay. And then they brought the hammer with 40,000 men and just crushed us. Um, yeah, so it's not necessarily that the Axis have had some amazing victories throughout all of that that really worry me. It's more so that I got a chance to see just how strong they were there, and it is a lot stronger than I thought it would be. Uh, that's the concerning part to me. And they're, they're still at the very beginning of their turn here. There's a lot more that they can still do. Boy, at one point there, the four stacks were over 100 combat attacking value. And with that, there's no single point in the line that can hold against it. It's just, it's not, not going to be possible. So it's just a matter of, and, and this comes back truly to, you, you have to have this philosophy, I think, playing as the Soviets in 41. It's just, the Axis player will push you to the doorsteps of Moscow, Leningrad, Stalingrad. It is a given. The question is, how much can you make them pay for it on the way? Really, that's that's the biggest variable as the Soviet player in this scenario, I think. Here they're pushing towards Novgorod quite strongly, I might say. And so far, that hex is holding. But if that falls, they're probably going to be able to take Novgorod. And yeah, that fell. They actually retreated to a pretty good position in Novgorod, though, so maybe we could still hold up one more turn. That's alarming. That is alarming. Ooh, and I hope these guys can hold, because I want to try to retreat out those units that are south there. We'll, we'll of course, probably take a look at this um, in the next episodes, but they are losing a lot of armor this turn is what I've been noticing. They have lost... Just mentally, my count is up to like 200 that they've lost just in these battles. Okay, so they retreated. So now, these guys right here, they may end up getting cut off, and that's going to be a concern. So we need to make sure we get them out if we have time still. Oh, they're continuing on towards Novgorod. My goodness. That's not good. Old. Hold, you need to hold. Please hold that town. If they break through there, the entire door of which pivots on Lake Ilmen is at risk. Yeah, Crimea, you are not getting troops next turn. You are not getting troops next turn. My goodness. So as predicted, the pattern is repeating itself, guys. Uh, I continue to be surprised at what the Axis player is capable of every time they get to do their movements. No, don't bring me back towards Smolensk. Just, just, let's just pretend, everyone, that they're done around Smolensk and that their turn is about to end. Let's just have that mentality, maybe. Let's just cover our ears, close our eyes, everything's fine, everything's fine. Still running the tanks. Can sometimes take a minute here as it's thinking about all the all the moves it should consider. Again, compliments compliments to the developers. I really have been just incredibly impressed by this game's AI. Um, considering especially the depth and the scale. Like this is as a human, this is very difficult to manage in my opinion. Uh, the front lines than a 1941 scenario as a Soviet player. Um, but to to also have the AI capability to make informed and, and strategic decisions with this many different variables is, is really quite impressive. This is west of Kharkov. 
because they're pushing now west of Kharkov. We're holding so far, though. Never mind. See, I shouldn't say these things. <laughs> Nothing good happens when I say these things. See, I would like to make that comment again here, but then we know what would happen. This is, this is one heck of a challenge, guys. Honestly, this is, this is very challenging. Okay, they're pushing south of Smolensk here, and I held the first attack, but considering what they did north of Smolensk, I'm really worried about what forces they have available at their disposal. They really, really surprised me with that. And, you know, we actually haven't talked about this, but it's really going to be quite interesting because we have held Smolensk longer than the historical capture date. I'm really curious if we can do it for another turn here. Um, because that that is some big news if we do. Ooh, wow, that did not... That looked like that hurt. Wow. These guys are just heroes holding out here. This is great. I need to shut up. I say that, and then what happens? My goodness. Okay. Well, they, they certainly put in a shift there. That must have been about six attacks they withstood. And I'm, I'm not going to say it. But I'll just propose a question instead. Well, doesn't Smolensk look interesting? <laughs> uh, this is south of Bryansk. Okay, so they're trying to push s the southern flank of Bryansk here, and we managed to hold against the first attack. Then they scouted us. This is south of Bryansk again. Managed to just be scouted. A lot happening. Oop, okay. So they push through here. This is west of Kursk. Oop, okay. Yeah, they're they're getting pretty aggressive there. And these are the rifle divisions, right? That's that's really what's leading to their success is they finally got their rifle divisions forward. Okay, and they won south of Bryansk now. They lost 20 armor doing it, though. Another five... Oh, we lost... How did we lose 10,000 men in that battle? Managed to hold here. They lost 72 armor. Holy crap. And for what? What did they get when they lost 72 armor? 39! Do these Axis players have not a care in the world for their long-term viability? I think we're getting close to 500 armor they've lost. This is insanity. And all for this patch of wood here. Absolute insanity. Wow. Yeah, I kind of expected this, right? This, this We are so weak along this line. I actually helped that one, though. Hmm. Curious. There we go. That was the result I expected. My, my, my. This is this is so interesting now to think about what I need to do next. Yeah, they retreated. That's pretty expected. Yeah, so considering they're they're gonna end up breaking through pretty much our entire defensive line between us and Kharkov, 
I am pretty glad that we put them there, despite the success um, that they have seen around Smolensk and Lake Gilman. Uh, I, I don't know if there was a right or correct decision with where to bring in those reserves, um, but I'm pretty happy with the one we chose. Yeah, so they're pushing through here. They're, they're coming into our layers that we had, right? And the layers are kind of doing their job. See, even in that case, they held. That's incredible. And then they route, of course. Just a hold there. Okay. These are just a light division, though. The 101st Light Division with 13,000 men. It's pretty light, you know. Probably more men than my strongest rifle division. South here. Oh, okay. So they're trying to cross the Dnieper. Please hold. Please give me one more turn along the Dnieper. They've now reached the second layer. My goodness. That's pretty aggressive. Or maybe you could just be done with your turn. That's okay, too, if you just want to call the turn quits, you know? I think I could be that lucky. You know, we're, we're really not doing that much damage to them, but every time they have to attack and we hold, it increases their fatigue, it lowers their combat prep, in, in most cases, that is. I mean, it is it is very meaningful every time they can hold. There's a stack of 18 armor, so that's scary. They're certainly going to be able to break through here. Will they break through on the main road, though? First, they scouted us. Scouted again. Okay, let's see how this goes. They're about to attack, I think. Oh, come on. Yeah, there it was. They brought in the Panzer Divisions. They lost 31 armor again, though. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I'm really happy about it, but I'm just so really kind of surprised. And this is where I bring back my optimistic tone. It's just, on the map, have they conquered way more than I would like them to have conquered? Yes, there is no doubt about it. I really would have liked them to, to still be um, in modern-day Belarus and such. Uh, but... But, at what cost have they conquered all of that? That's my optimism. Is maybe they have, have cost so much that they, they will not be able to finish. They're trying to cross the Dnieper here. We held again. This is nerve-wracking. Absolutely nerve-wracking. Oh, no. They're going to break through, I think. Come on, guys. Just hold a little longer. Just hold a little longer. I'm actually really glad you were able to retreat out there. Hold, hold, hold. Oh boy, this is getting tense. We're not going to hold, I don't think, though. I think they just have too much there. Yeah. Come on. End your turn. You're done. You're finished. You've taken so many losses, you're just going to call it quits now. It's all over. You stand no chance of succeeding. Just rest on your laurels for a turn. Yes, they finally surrendered. That's fair. Oh, 
out there. Please stop attacking. Is anyone else sweating? I feel like I'm sweating. Still holding. Oh, yep, we jumped up 15%. Good, in the turn, in the turn. You're all done. You have nothing else to do. Other than crush through more of my front line, I guess. Wow. Just wow. Come on, in the turn. You are so fatigued, you are so worn down, you don't want to continue any longer. Yes, this is a Jedi mind trick, and holy crap, it worked. Okay. Overall, I'm happy with that. They did not take Smolensk, they did not cross the Dnieper, they did not take a single strategic objective. I'm happy with that. That, that was good. A little surprising, <laughs> certainly a little surprising, uh, a little concerned having seen how strong some of their army stacks were, but we did not lose anything material. So overall, I'm happy with that. That's, that was good. That was good. Going through our logistics phase. And then we will find ourselves at the end of turn summary. Let's see here. Okay, so we lost 144,000 men in one week. My, my gosh, 2,400 guns, 730 armor. That's actually not that many. 320 airframes. Net change on the map was positive 34,000 men. For the Axis, was a negative 11,000, right? That kind of says it all. Uh, guns, negative 1,600 compared to positive 50 for the Axis. Here is where it's really meaningful. We lost 667 armor. The Axis lost 220. Let me add a caveat there, right? The 667 armor that the Soviets lost there in that turn, it's not like it was 667 KV-1s and T-34s and the, the main battle tanks that will become famous from this war. It was all the stuff they built in the early 30s that was crap. I, I shouldn't be so offensive with that statement, but it's, it's not the premier top-of-the-line stuff that we're losing there. For the Axis player, 220 armor for them to replace is very, very, it's a very big deal. So I'm really happy to have seen that. Airframes, we lost 340, they lost 55. That's actually, again, pretty, pretty happy with that. We have 160 units on low supply, uh, which is higher than I'd like, but it's not terrible. And then we have 52 units under strength and 94 unready. I actually think those numbers got a little better this turn but that might be too much optimism. For news events, um, oh, okay, so the Axis had a setback in Northern Africa, so Italian campaign events are moved forward. Um, so that's good. So again, this I think we made this comment in the previous turn, because we had something similar, or two turns ago, turn six it was, is that tells us that it's not like the Axis have full theater boxes versus worth of units that they're not deploying to the front line. They are clearly deploying a lot of their energy here to the Soviet front. And then Soviet partisans continue their, their work behind enemy lines. All in all, guys, another fantastic episode. Thanks for following along with me. Thanks for your continued support. You guys are awesome. If you got any questions or comments, please toss them in the comments section below. And as always, strategy gamers, hoping you have yourselves an excellent day. Bye now.